and removes all of that jerk, all of that junk, all of that dirt. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited here. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Dr. Badawi, there are a number of questions um, about women and Islam. And this qu question fairly summarizes the others, and that is, what's the justification for restricting women's freedom in the Muslim faith? That is another myth. And before the three minutes are over, I'll give you a reference to read my book. It's available in soundvision.com. And type the title, it's called Gender Equity in Islam, where there are dozens of verses in the Quran that show that indeed normative Islam is different from the practices of some Muslims. I'm not saying all, some Muslims or many Muslims for that matter. And I stand by what I said earlier in my introduction, in my rebuttal, that we cannot understand Islam by simply pointing to exaggerated or true uh, um, uh, misbehavior of Muslims as individuals, groups, or state. Islam is what is in the scripture, and the ultimate source is the Quran for this. So to say that there is um, a mistreatment of women in, the, in Islam, it is totally mixing the mistreatment of women by some Muslim, which is not in Islam. Suffice to say that in the Quran, women, men and women have the same spirit by the text of the Quran. Two, nowhere in the Quran does it point the finger to Eve as the reason for the fall of Adam or eating from the forbiddity. Not once it was mentioned that both of them were blamed because there is no concept of original sin in Islam. Number three, the suffering of women during pregnancy and childbirth is described in the Quran as a reason to adore mothers. And let me conclude with my favorite hadith. One man came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he said, who among all people is most worthy of my love and good companionship? The prophet said, your mother. He said, who's next? Number two. He said, your mother. He said, who's next? He said, your mother only in the fourth time. He said, and your father. In Olympic terms, gold medal for the mother, silver medal for the mother, bronze medal for the mother, the father might get some consolation or appreciation certificate. <laughs> this is a myth when the Quran speak about marital relationship. It says that the foundation of marriage is dwelling in peace, love, and tranquility. Love and compassion. Love, compassion, and peace are the foundation of marriage. The Prophet of Islam said, uh, the best of you is the best of his family. And by the way, there are many historical challenges, even ancient, about the age of Aisha at the marriage of the Prophet. I'll answer that tomorrow, inshallah. The Quran, when it speaks about women, it speaks about the right of inheritance, but give man even greater financial responsibility because they take less. The man is fully responsible for the expenditure of the household, even if his wife is richer than him. The fact that some Muslims misunderstand, misapply, I don't care how many. Truth is truth. I don't care how many. I have no agenda, I have no politics in it. Truth is truth. I say my opinion independently on this and other issues. I again recommend that you go to find what are these disturbing things. Read my paper. Read my paper on apostasy. And I'm not the only one. There are scholars like Dr. Taha Jabir Iran had a book also. And there is a, a Malaysian scholar who challenged this notion that anyone who lives Islam automatically must be killed. So we need to read the facts. Go and read. I encourage up. you. Thanks that he said go and read Badawi's material on your own, independent, without any preconceived ideas. That's the challenge. Thank, thank you. I'll give you an extra 10 seconds. Pastor Safa. Dr. Badawi can have all my time because I like his version of Islam. Okay. I mean that. It's not my only one. There's lots of people. Whatever you say, I like. We are a diverse nation. Instead of enforcing closed mindedness, why not embrace difference and emphasize tolerance? Again, your question is wrong to begin with. We're not projecting intolerance. We're not putting Muslims down. We're not raising banners. I didn't come to your services, any of those services, and raise a banner, so you're blaspheming our God, and we challenge you to a debate. We don't, we're not the one who's carrying intolerance. And again, I go back to what the Bible commands us, God so loved the world. The Bible says, he who hates walks in darkness and doesn't see the light. So the the intolerance is not from Christians. Today, you know what I did all day today? 
I fasted all day today and prayed for every single one of you Muslims, not for Christians. I prayed for Dr. Badawi and every single one of you. Why would I want to do that if I hate you? And you know what I prayed? God, that they may see. Lord, heal him. Actually, I prayed for, for some of you that need healing in your body. I prayed for your healing tonight. Why would I want to do that if I hate you? And so, again, the intolerance is not, now, that's my stance. And you challenge me, and that's my stance. I don't know what other, other Christians do. As a matter of fact, I sent two letters to people. I said, if you do not come there to love on these people, don't come there. Because we walk in love. And uh, we're commanded because we're born out of Jesus. Jesus is love. God so loved the world. And so again, the intolerance, what you're saying is, what are the, what are the, the points of, the, what was that the question again? It's confusing. question was confusing. Let's say, read that again. The question please. was about uh, the point of in diversity and tolerance. Di diver yeah. Intolerance. Diversity, we're allowed. Thank God for it. America allows this. Thank God it's, we're allowed to do it. This is what we want on this planet over. This is what I like to have. I, you know, I've got a, a two hours. I preach to millions of Muslims every day on my network. And every day I sit there and talk to these, some of these government authorities. And I say, allow people to speak their mind. Allow people to speak their mind. Do you know how many people of our group are sitting in prison and tortured by Muslim hands? So the intolerant, there are no Christian nations where they're torturing Muslims because they're blaspheming Christians. So the idea of intolerance, there is not from our side. We would like, we are living together. The very fact that all of you Muslims are not living in your country, you live here, that tells me that you don't believe in their system. You believe in this system. And thank God for that. That's right. And so, again, uh, that just dif differences doesn't mean we have to come and compromise. This interfaith thing that we all come together and we mesh our ideology together, it's, it's not correct. Because the truth is the truth. You can mix. It's not a mixed dressing that you can mix it up. And so, 10 seconds or 10 minutes? Okay. <laughs> ten, ten, yeah, 10 seconds. Thank you. Last question goes to Dr. Butterway, and, the, and there are a number of questions about uh, the general issue of diversity, and this is a perfect segue from the last question. If the Quran teaches religious diversity, how come countries that are primarily Islamic persecute and do not tolerate non-Islamic re religions? I would have to reiterate again and again and again. Islam is something the practice of people, whether they succeed, deviate in a different, different degrees, this has nothing to do with Islam. It's not that Muslims did not understand their faith. Let me just pose a question to you. If we're talking about tolerance or intolerance coming only from one side, would Pastor Safa say that the Crusades that were initiated by the Pope, the highest authority, with people having the cross on their chest, singing onward Christian soldiers, entering Jerusalem and killing men, women, and children. Blood was flowing in the street. Would we consider that an act of tolerance? The Inquisition that gave Muslims either the opportunity to embrace Christianity or being killed or exiled, and some ships, when they were exiled, were drowned. Is that part of Christian intolerance? When the two world wars in which millions of people perished, these were not initiated by Muslims, is that Christian tolerance? The main difference, I, sup I suspect, between Pastor Safa and myself is that for me as a Muslim, I can see more than what he said about the intolerance of some Muslims in the, the 2,000 years of Christianity. In fact, many historians say Muslims have been far more tolerant than any other religion or nations in the world. When he tried to paint the 1500 years as evil, I spoke about the House of Wisdom in Baghdad, Muslim cooperating with Christians, to the, the point that there are historical documents that they show that Muslims were very, very tolerant with them. And these are testimonies even from some non-Muslim, sometimes clergy. The difference is that when I look at the Crusades, when I look at the Inquisition, when I look at the various wars raised by Christian countries against each other or against Muslims, you can give a big list also of how Muslims were killed and being tortured also in prisons of Christian, quote-unquote, country. For me as a Muslim, I say, no, 
These are not true Christians. They're hiding behind the good name of Christ, and no matter how many, they're wrong. I would not be dissuaded if somebody says, but the Crusades was not a few freak people. They were masses. They're wrong. If they're wrong, they're wrong. But 